Um, great questions, mate. So I've updated your MMR in the document because we haven't, obviously it's been ages since we did coaching and stuff, but it's good to see going back to when we first started, you were like 44, 45. It's been that gradual climb of about 400 mm -hmm. MMR, 300 MMR from there. You know, you are getting closer to GM, right? So, <laughs> yeah, which is um, awesome. It's like such a slow, gradual thing at this level where there's lots of like two steps forward, one step back kind of thing, just because obviously, you know, StarCraft. <laughs> it's uh yeah. it's challenging you're learning new skills and all that so um yeah i think this is a really good focus so you were playing full-on roach style previously in zvt were you um no i just i was trying to play ling bane ling bane muta but i was just doing it in a very poor unorganized way mm. okay cool cool all right so let's uh let's i mean just grind through this replay and look at all the bloody details so <clears throat> let's go right back to the very opening and i would say the tr the cool thing about learning super solid ling bane and i like your idea of the four gas style by the way that's it's such a good way to play zvz because you just have more shit um and <laughs> it kind of forces you to backstab your opponent um which is great because that's what you should be doing always yep. with ling bane and, and it's, zvt it's um, definitely a weakness of mine so i was like hey if i do this style maybe it'll like get me to actually start learning how to do this properly <laughs> it's fantastic for that it's so good it's um i you know it's my comeback style right like i'm always like i, I always uh, have the the joke where i'm like yeah i'll lose eight games in a row to four gg and then the moment i start just like i'll lose 25 drones to his hellion dive but if i swap into this style i'm like oh just kill him i'm like I'm so fucking far behind and I just like make the sickest comebacks with the Massling Bane style all the time versus really good players. And I'm like, holy fuck, this is such a good, like it's such a good comeback style. Like whenever, I, I, I remember when I first figured out like this, if you're like just fucked in a game, you just stay low gas and just like build a shitload of units and hope they move out and then you can do a mixture of backstabbing and surrounding. It's, it's powerful. And in this matchup, it's even more powerful than the others. I've had games where I stayed too gas because like I've taken so much damage really? early and I'm like, well... We're going to have double upgrades and eventually I'll have enough gas for Bane speed and I'll have like six Banes in my army. Or recently, I've actually just not been getting the Banelings at all and just been going Infestors in that scenario. Because I'm like, well, the thing is, if you have enough Zerglings, like most people aren't actually that crazy heavy on their Marines. And the thing is, if you just have a critical mass of Lings surrounding everything and the mobility with the backstab, is, it's, it's crazy what you can do. Now, obviously, that's all beside the point. What we need to focus on is our basics, right? Our really solid solid opening okay so let's go back and look at every single detail from the start are you doubling your work as usually uh this okay i normally do i was a little frazzled in this game because this was actually a uh ctl match and, i was thinking um, this might be a, a match okay awesome this was the second game and he did the same exact build and so i the the first game i was already a little frazzled from the first game <laughs> so i don't think i did it this game but i normally do double them up i put them on the close mineral patches Okay, no worries. Um, uh, replay this, Aleph. Not. Oh, by the way, sorry. I'll just double check the stream really quickly. You guys can hear uh, Killjoy. Okay, yeah, guys. Um, can you just say something one more time? I'll just look at the bar. Testing, testing. Yeah, you're, you're perfect. You're perfect. It's fine. <laughs> okay. it, it should be good enough. If I'm a little bit louder, I, I'm sorry, guys, but I'm gonna go back to just staring here at uh at this. Okay, cool. So Overlord looks like it's on time. We should be sending a drone down to that natural. Maybe slightly late on that. Not a big issue, I don't think. No, it should be fine. There we go. 48, 49 second hatchery. <clears throat> okay. Building three more drones. Um, we're not rallying the eggs there. So just a little tip is you could have rallied those eggs out, right? Because the first yes. one should have been rallied to this top left patch. Uh, well, well, second from the top left. Uh, and then the then it should have been like gas pool right after that, right? I mean, you can go the pool first. Keeps you slightly safer versus uh, proxy racks. That's what I've been doing, yeah. Uh, okay. I, I prefer it just because of the proxy racks. <laughs> no worries. That's totally fine. Um, yep. So it's like... Catch, and, the, and the thing is, like, if you struggle against that and 12 pool, I always tell people, like, but you're really adamant about going hatch first. Like, you can just go, like, 17 pool and then take the the gas and build the two more drones like right, doing it like okay. both before the gas and a drone early that's 75 minerals early you get your zergling so much quicker it just makes defense so much easier so if you ever are like oh, i really want to go hatch first but this is pissing me off then uh, we can do that okay, okay um sweet. so you're going for the 20 overlord by the looks of it or the 19 overlord even so that's like a little bit old school we definitely can delay that if we want the 19 overlord because you're going 16 hatch um the hatchery is down so early 
that you actually can delay this 19 overlord. Do you always really? go 19 okay. over or? I do, <laughs> but if I can delay it, I'm totally good with that too. So you can actually go for the overlord on 27 if you want to do a clash opening or 20. So I, okay. for now, I'd just say 19 overlord uh, should be on 20. Once, just get that drone slightly faster. And the reason I say 20 is because then it's the same as ZBZ and ZVP should also both be 20 with a six stand hatch. So for me, um, you'll see on my stream, for instance, I'm going for like the really quick third into the 27 overlord. <clears throat> oh, the, oh, the 27 okay. overlord and one drone and then the third hatch and then the ling speed and then the third queen, right? So I, I do it that way. But then in ZVP and ZVZ, I'm doing the 20 overlord. So every now and then if I'm like busy talking to chat, not being super focused, I do the slightly wrong opening at ZVT, but then I'm doing the 20 overlord and... It's just simpler for you if you just do 20 Overlord in all three matchups, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, not that a huge sense. thing. It's, it's very minor, but yeah. <clears throat> okay, so you're building a uh, Overlord here and three more drones, which is not bad. But I would say, where's that third queen starting up now? Okay, in the third queen is late. Okay. Forces. Also, you went six slings. Uh, is that normal for you? Nope, that was a misclick. <laughs> okay, just four lings normally. That's good, because the extra <laughs> yep. two lings just a waste of time. What about our distraction here in terms of like, okay, so you do it, you, you end up going for a 28 hatchery. Hmm. So what I mean by distraction here is like, it's actually a small thing, but when the Reaper's distracting you, you're putting your third down, you're microing your lings. A lot of people stack up like four, five lava there, just not spending it. And if you can just build ah. in the middle of that, it's really nice. Um, and starting ling speed on time is really not important uh, right now. Okay. Unless you're getting Hellion dived by people that have gone super fast factory and their first two Hellions are diving you at like 350 all the time and your, your link speed's not ready. It's pretty rare that's an issue. Okay. No, I think you did fine. You did fine. So I'm okay with your opening. I, I'm very happy for this. I don't think there's any big uh, signs of weakness. Just in general though, <clears throat> you go link speed here, that's fine. But then it should be probably third queen plus Overlord, and then Drones is what Sorry, I would queen, normally go drones. for. Now, obviously, it's up to you a little bit in terms of what you prioritize, because what you prioritize here is the Drones first. You go three Drones, then you do remember the Overlord, which is good. For me, I like the Queen and the Overlord because it just makes sure I remember everything. Um, okay. Makes it easier for me to make sure like the Queen and the Overlord are just always paired together um because the 36 supply block is such a dumb supply block to hit so i just i really like to pair those together and it's like this is an unbreakable chunk when i do one i do the other and no matter what's happening it's like even if i'm defending the reaper it's build queen and then i'm trying to build the overlord even though i don't have the money i'm just like wait for that hundred minerals yeah okay. um anyways i think you've done fine creep tumor in the main can be helpful but uh, it's not the most important thing. So I think we're pretty chill. <clears throat> we should just be droning. You've got one tumor down. And you should actually have two tumors down, but he sniped one, but you killed yeah, him, so that's totally fine. So we're counting this as two tumors being down. Um, <clears throat> Overlord positioning's good. Where's this Overlord on the left clicked to? Where have you clicked this guy to? I don't know. Uh, the one leaving the main right now. Uh, yeah, this, this guy here. Do you see where I'm signaling? Uh, sorry, do it again. I was on everyone. Or I was on myself. Oh, that one. I can't see where he's clicked. He must just be clicked on the terrain there or something, right? I, I, I must. It must be in the doodad or something. I must not be able to see his movement yeah. marker because of that. It's weird like that because normally I can see like a green circle where he's moved to, but I can't see it. So or maybe you clicked him all the way up on the edge of the map. Anyways, we'll, we'll find out. Um, okay. Okay. Let's, let's not spend too long just staring. Okie doke. All right. All right. Looks like we're going to get a bit distracted by these Hellions. Uh, overload positioning on the right is fantastic. Okay. So we are running a little low on the injects here because <clears throat> that, that natural doesn't have an inject. That's fine. So from here, so I would try to be nonstop focused on queen production and just like each okay. one pops inject, bring it to the front. Um, I imagine you're still playing with just one queen control group, right? Two. I have uh, creep queens on zero, W, and then or zero. Sorry, zero. But it's hotkey to W. Uh, yeah. And then inject queens on four. Okay. Oh, okay. But that's just your injecting queens. But like you don't have yes. like a two two defensive groups, right? Which oh, is two fine. defensive groups. No, I don't. No. Uh, if I'm if it's like a 
Hellion style, I and I feel like I'm don't have enough links to defend, I'll put like two near my third and three in the spot between my third and my nat and kind of move them around as needed. Yeah, that's well, that's really good. I think that's awesome. As long as you do split them up if they're being super mobile like that, just so that it's a bit more, you know, you're not constantly running back and forwards feeling like, man, this guy's so active with Italians, he's pulling me around, you know? Um, okay, so Banely Nest and your spores are way too early, okay? So okay. that's this is awesome. So spore, spore timing. If we wanted to be super safe, 4 minutes 30 is like the earliest, but what we're going to do, because you're not going to play someone who does a perfectly crisp banshee right very rarely and you simply do not need a spore ready for the liberator um not to mention you still wouldn't need this i think what we'll say generally is just 445 safety spores okay if you don't know what's going on or you're just like hey it's a hellion it's a hellion opening basically right there could be a lib a banshee whatever we'll just build spores at 445 and that's completely safe first just about everything now if you do find Multiple times Banshees are getting in before then. You can speed that up by five seconds, 440. Okay. Technically 430 if your opponent does like the sickest build ever, but I don't think that's anywhere in the meta right now. Um, you'll have to see what's happening on the ladder yourself, but we, we want to make sure that's later. For for context, you built yours at 405, even earlier than that, 403, okay. which is like 40 <laughs> seconds too early. And this is a crucial point because you're already going to eight queens at actually a very good timing. Your queen production is good. You're going to have eight queens uh, by 445. So that's awesome. And that's like basically eight or nine queens is all you ever need, right? Problem. Mm -hmm. You don't have any drones on your third. Only two right now with like one or two more rallying over, right? Or three more rallying over. So five drones on your third. And the problem is okay. you're spending all your money on that. You've got lots of idle lava. You don't have money. And your baneliness has just started, which is meaning you can't spend it. Also, it's getting to the point where there's a good Hellion count, dude. He's really hit his Hellion production. This is a guy who's delayed his third command center. So he's got six Hellions really fast, right? Mm -hmm. But you have no Zerglings. And right now, because you're investing in the Spores and the Baneling Nest, both very early, even the Baneling Nest is earlier than needed, and a shit ton of Queens, we're kind of like, fuck, man. If we build safety lings right now to stop him running by as well, your economy is shit. And we're really yeah. hoping he dives and throws his units away. Or we're just like not really in a great competitive economic position. So number one, let's simplify it. Delay the Spores. Number two, Bane Nest, not necessary at all this early. Now, I would say pro timing, 4.30. Guess what? Bane Nest is 4.30 with the Clash Raynor build. Guess what? I often take it at 4.45, five minutes, and so does Raynor um, regularly okay. because he's more focused on hitting his production, keeping that lava spending, drones, zerglings, queens, defending, right? And very rarely will you get punished for having that Bane Nest on the later end. So... I'm going to change it. So 4.30 is the super duper pro gamer timing. You're not a super duper pro gamer. Neither am I. We're <laughs> going to say Bane Nest is more closer to like 4.45 or even five minutes, right? Basically, the idea is we want to just push these back a little bit, right? I like your queen production staying tight. We're going to keep that where it is, okay? But we're going to okay. adjust the spores in Bane Nest to both be on the later end. And that's going to allow you to have the queen zergling combo to make sure you can defend. And if with this game where you've got pretty good overlord vision and stuff and you're seeing these Hellions building up pretty quick, you can definitely be building Zerglings to be safe reactively. But I think as standard, we should probably be building a few more Lings, right? Um, yeah. Probably, I think, I think normally I have a marker of about 420. Get up to like 15 Zerglings. Okay, that makes sense. And that's flexible because if they've only got two Hellions, you haven't seen any other Hellion activity, they're going super quick 3cc. Maybe they only built four Hellions. Maybe you only build two or four more Zerglings, right? You get like 10 Zerglings. You're like, eh. But if this guy's veering around between different attack angles with his Hellions, like this guy's been doing this whole early game, you feel a bit more pressure from it. It's like, okay, I'll build those things a bit earlier. And if I have to overbuild them, that's fine. But the whole point is to feel confident the moment you've done that, like drone, 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 inject drone, inject drone right afterwards, right? That's that's the important <laughs> yeah. thing. We want to feel confident that we're not staring at it. Okay, sweet. That makes sense. Yeah, that would okay. definitely help. <clears throat> cool. And you can, I mean, we can see even the spores alone is a game changer because even, I mean, you only built two, not three. So if he flies into your third with a like, cloaked banshee, it's like, well, you're still wide open to that, right? Which sucks. But um, Right, yeah. 
Each one of those is uh, 75 minerals plus the drone itself, right? So each spore is two and a half workers killed, essentially. So, you know, this is what I always like tell people who are harassing Zergs as well. It's like, hey, dude, you made him build spores. You killed seven and a half workers without actually going in the base just by making them build three spore crawlers, right? It's instant damage. So you got to be careful with that instant self-inflicted damage with the spores as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, so the Banely Nest is, is definitely going to be something we push back. So the Banely Nest plus the spores delayed. We can imagine this eight lavas all drones. Eight drones coming out. Or, or or maybe it's six pairs of Zerglings, right? Twelve Zerglings. So then you've got 18 Zerglings, which is even more than I said, right? Maybe it just makes you comfortable. And then it's two okay. more drones. And the next cycle will be more drones to like fill out the third. So, so soon after five minutes or about five minutes your third's completely full of drones basically right so we can add that as like a soft benchmark i guess right okay yep um uh, fully saturated third base okay so that's just kind of and and the thing is in like a really clean game 430 if no pressure right so if they've only built two hellions or not no hellions right if they're going for like a 211 you should be able to have all three mineral lines saturated by 430 because you didn't need to build those zerglings or anything like that or the spores so if you okay. save the spores don't need them at all against a, two, a non-hellion opening right because you know their starports delayed don't build the zerglings your third saturated by 430 maybe even 420 and then you'd go into the zergling production so you're ready for that five minute 520 530 211 attack right gotcha okay yeah that makes sense cool that sounds, sounds much better than what i've got going on right now <laughs> That's good as well, because we're kind of like trying to put this in the context of like, hey, what's he doing as well, right? So it's like, you know, just just understanding like how much that costs us, like those the difference in those benchmarks is like, okay, this is like the difference when I have to build all those extra extra lings and whatnot. Okay, that that does actually cost us something. <clears throat> um, yeah. All right, we got six more drones coming out. Let's see how we go here. Lib's gonna come in. We didn't notice it coming in, which is always a bummer. Let's see how quick you react. Oh, very quick reaction. Bonerific, mate. Fantastic. All right. Let's see how quickly we reset here. Okay, you're continuing your macro, which is good, but we should also have moved the spore and the queen on the natural already. We're a little slow to do that. Notice how you only did that after he moved. You could have predicted this, right? So yeah. that could have been part of moving that other spore over and that queen over. And even I would have been doing that immediately. When I saw the lib on sieging, I probably would have already been moving the queen and the spore in the natural. So try to chunk that together in your defense of libs. If you can if you can do that, it'll be really fantastic. Because I, I bet you he didn't look at the liberator here. And if you'd done that, it just flies in and dies to the queen and the spore. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So lib defense equals part of that defensive chunk, that defensive set of actions is preparing the next base, right? So move queen plus spore to edge or build spore if there isn't one, right? So if that lib comes in and I didn't have the spore like you did, I'm just moving the queen around the top like you did. Mm -hmm. I'm, all, I'm just going to move the queen behind the natural, build a spore there build a spore in the main as well and i'm also going to build a spore in the third so that would all be part of that same kind of defensive chunk of actions because i've been tortured by liberators too many times um by not doing that so i'm just like nope i'm going to assume that lib's going to be microed like maru's microing it it's going to move between my bases and i'm going to have those spores Swarm ready at each base those queens already out on the edge um you know b before it even gets there uh Sometimes that means I'm queuing up and inject. I'm going inject the queen, shift click her behind the natural. Inject the third queen, shift click her behind the third minerals as well. Sometimes like, obviously that's a bit more advanced, but you know, just, just the same idea there is I'm like, I, I want to just leave that there for the next 30 seconds. Um, so when that lib rotates, we're ready for it, yeah. Okay, sweet. Makes sense. Cool. <clears throat> so we can see how your opponent's doing a really good job with their Hellions, and now we're like splitting the queens a little bit, which is good, but... <laughs> it's kind of funny looking at this because like now I'm finally used to always using two queen defensive groups in the early game and I'm like oh man it really does help a lot now I don't know if you are motivated to learn that or not just because it is a really cool thing to learn but it is quite different if you do that two queen defense groups it's only for the early game right 
And the idea is you just take control group two, right? Control group two, which is like normally a mutalist key or something like that. Right, becomes yep. a secondary one. And then you just always stick to a certain system, which is really awkward at first because you're not used to it. Your muscle memory will get tangled. Like for me, I'll always have the initial, the, the, the queen group that I'm used to. That'll be defending the front, which is the third base. You see how I'm signaling? Yep. And then the secondary group will be in between the natural, right? Or out, out okay. front of the natural. That's just kind of the way I, I do it. And I always do it in that order because when I was first learning it, I'd get tangled up and I'd be confused about which group was where. So I'd send like the group that was defending the Hellions to defend the battle cruiser in the main and the other group, and they're like having to like cross paths and run all the way across. <laughs> and I'm like, oh god damn it, why is this so difficult? And I'm like, oh man, I just haven't built a muscle memory system for like, hey, that group's always on covering that side, that group's covering that side. And when it comes to banshees, battle cruisers, that secondary group, it goes into the main to defend that, right? While the other one is on the low ground. And then suddenly banshees and battle cruisers become super easy, right? You're playing against a build at like five minutes 20, if I haven't seen any air units, I just like send that second queen group up in the main, they teleport right on top of the spore and your four or five queens that are there. And it's deep in the orange extended. after killing one one or two drones at most, right? And you're like, oh, <laughs> wow, Battle Cruiser builds suck now. Um, that was a real game changer for me. I don't know if we're gonna bother doing that. We'll revisit that down the line. I don't think this is the highest priority for you, but it just made me think of it because this guy was really good with his movement. So shout out to Aleph Nort for this. Like that was really good. The way he just stayed active and you're just like, fuck man, can you just sit, like just attack one angle and dive in or something? Like let me kill these units so I don't have to keep moving my queens around. Um, definitely something that we can, uh, we can look at. Yeah, because if you only have one queen group, it's quite APM intensive just mirroring that Hellion yeah, movement constantly. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. I do struggle with that when they're super active with their Hellions, so that would probably be useful. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny. It's it's lazy to not learn the mechanic, but it's also like frustrating to not learn it as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you got a fourth pretty quick. You stayed super low Zerglings the whole time. So, yeah, there was definitely opportunities. Like, these Hellions could have dived in here, killed eight workers and run away or something, right? Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's six minutes, and you can see that just kind of like, okay, we've, we've taken our gas, we're saturating them. Our fourth is at, like, a decent time. But you can see your main's a bit undersaturated. We haven't started 1-1 one, one upgrades yet. And this all just flows off the spores, the Bailey Nest being early, and us, like, missing a few injects and being kind of, like, behind overall on just the building those early drones that would have given you more minerals. More minerals would have mean faster fourth. It means you also could have had that macro hatch, or in my case, faster fifth base and macro hatch is what I really like to do, right? Um, don't be afraid to do that. As you get better at macro, you might go for the quad hatch. Um, you know, just chuck a dark. Uh, it, it's insane to see a championship player do it, but yeah, those games where he's just, oh, I'm going to build four fucking extra hatcheries because I'm dark <laughs> and I, I don't like injecting properly. Um, he's a guy who always keeps all of his queens on one control group. He doesn't split them. And he that includes his injecting queens. So if you ever like create a, a real respectful situation, he pulls every fucking queen to deal with it. So the trick for any Terran to get ahead versus dark is just to harass without overcommitting. Just fly around and run around a lot and uh, Dark will ruin his own economy by pulling every queen for it. So <laughs> that's like the, the trick I noticed when I was watching him verse Beyond the other week. I was like, oh, this is why he's so good at like handling crisis, crises because he pulls everything so quick. But it's also like if you don't actually commit to a fight there and let him kill your stuff, he's in. He's, it, it doesn't work out. Um, okay, so yeah, generally speaking, don't be making Banelings at this point. Uh, maybe like six, seven, eight, but 15 banelings. This is like a really common thing I see amongst a lot of players is massing banelings before bane speed's done. Even when bane speed's done, we still don't really want to be using banelings to defend pushes, right? Like we, it's the zerglings that are efficient. The banelings are just there yeah. to like kill the marines that are clumped up. So we want just enough to do that, right? Um, you also went straight for gases on the fourth. Don't don't ever do that. Um, that's a luxury. Uh, you also fully gotcha. droned okay. your fourth base. So, you, I mean... That's cool. You've gotten I, away with it. That's nice. I saw the th that's that's kind of my issue. I saw the third, and I was like, okay, he's taking his third. I feel like I can maybe drone my fourth a little bit, but I'm guessing that's not correct. <laughs> I mean, I think you can easily get away with this. I think I think you you always have enough room to like make surprisingly amounts of of, of drones and get away with it. Um, definitely, the fifth base is good. But why are we building five more drones? Why do we even? I mean, it's okay. 
So we're transferring workers there, plus the five uh, drones to fully... Okay, it's just the, the guys five. on the gas is really hurting me, that's all. The guys on the gas on that fourth is just on super unnecessary. <laughs> that's it. Just just that. I'm like, man, man, how is that fourth not saturated yet? Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. As long as you... you yeah. I um, saw the three extra racks and I was like, okay, I think I can safely drone to 80. And then my thought was, now after I hit 80, I just start making Link Bane. Yeah, I think in general, like a better rule is like just make Ling Bane off 66 turns or like depending okay. on how the early game, like if you're behind, especially um, or if the uh, if you're uh, ahead, like, yeah, just drone the minerals on the fourth. Right. And and that only needs about eight workers on the fourth because then you can transfer eight from your main as it mines out. Right. So like okay, you, you yeah. actually, yeah, uh, case in point, look at this. You did what a lot of pros do, which is really bad at this point. Check this out. I've been really chastising pros for this lately. You looked at your main. You looked at the number above your hatchery. You said, ooh, 16 out of 12. I'll pull four drones. Number one, this is costing you conscious mental energy to look at a number and respond to it. Number two, it's going to be different every game. Number three, those other two mineral patches are going to mine out in 30 seconds. Well, somehow the one on the top left isn't because that apparently wasn't getting mined heavily. But it should be usually about this time. So okay. this is always going to happen between eight minutes and nine minutes is four mineral patches will mine out on your main. So you should drop it down to eight workers. Assuming you had correct saturation, 16 workers, it means you pull eight off there, right? If you do this at eight minutes, 30 every game, like clockwork, rather than looking at the number, if you notice the number, that might be what triggers you. Oh, main's already mining out? Drop it to eight. Because otherwise you have to come back 30 seconds later and do it again. And I see pros do this all the time, like Hero and stuff. They're like, no, oh, it says one patch is gone. I'll pull two workers off this base and put them somewhere else. 20 seconds later, three more patches mine out and they don't look back and transfer the workers for another three minutes. And I'm like, what are we doing? This is something which like in the first month of Leg Legacy of the Void, we should have figured out. It's the same time every game. Eight, 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 minutes, eight minutes, eight minutes, 30, grab eight workers, put them on your fourth. You do this like clockwork. It costs you no mental energy. It's a habit. It happens consistently. You don't get any of these games where it's 12, 13 minutes in and you still haven't transferred from your main because you just forgot. This is a beautiful habit. So I really recommend everyone build that habit. Transfer okay. from the main. Leave eight workers, right? That's a, a huge, huge habit. <clears throat> um, okay. Okay. So you're building five yes. more workers. That's cool. All right. So and all you need to do here is build Ling Bane, and you should absolutely win this game. Um, well, number one, your map controls this... sucks ass. Um, well, that's, that's true, yeah. Where are your overlords? So you, he didn't even build a Viking this game, and yet we don't have... You never put overlord on the right side. And at this point, it's like, hey, there's no Vikings. We, I would, If I were you, I'd be clicking overlords. You see how I'm signaling, right? Yep, yep. I'd be clicking those. I would definitely have the watchtowers, and I'd have Lings there, there... Uh, there, I might have one here to watch these rocks in case he breaks them. Um, that that's huge. You've got an overlord sitting over his third, which is <laughs> kind of <laughs> hilarious. Um, and you actually see reactors there. So what does that mean? Those three reactors. Uh, just constant. I, I know it's eight racks, just constant marine production. And I knew he was going to do a, uh, like a push off this. I know there was no fourth because. Um, well, I guess I don't know that, but based off seeing the reactors, I would assume there's no fourth, and this is just going to be a a two base or a three base push, just constant yeah. marine rally <laughs> across the map. Absolutely, uh, it's just going to be marines, probably just one factory building tanks. Even if you hadn't seen it, just seeing those reactors, you know, you know, it's and and the thing is, it's not even marauders. So, um, if you get ultras out or lurkers, like his army's just so fucking bad. Like he can't even build ghosts or marauders out of that. Like it's so all in, right? It's just about pure raw damage output, right? Mm -hmm. Now you can defend this with just Ling Bane for sure. But if you got say ultras would be the most accessible thing to get. You deciding to go hive and hydrogen, lurkers works as well. But I mean, for instance, we were not we would not waste any money on hydra upgrades. Okay. Why? Well, you're not playing Ling Bane Hydra, first of all. So if you're going hive and hydrogen at the same time. The only reason you're getting the hive is for the lurkers. Hydra upgrades are like, oh, I can afford extra bonus things. Hey, we're getting all in. We know he's got reactors. So we're not building extra bonus upgrades, right? We're not going to be like, let's get pathogen glands and two vipers and lurker upgrades and hydra upgrades and also adrenal glands and also plus three carapace. And hey, let's drop an ultra cavern as well. Like, you know, that's obviously going to be really loose thinking in this scenario. All you need to do, focus on your Ling Bane. And if we can squeeze a few Lurkers out, maybe one Viper to start abducting or blinding clouding tanks, going to be game changing, right? 
So that's cool on a strategic level. On the basic level though, if you just have good map control and you're making Ling Bane, which you should be able to do here, all you should be doing as always is going, cool, I'm spreading creep like crazy. Things like this, you should just jump on immediately and then be respreading the creep, right? Anytime he gives you map control like this, creep, 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 just cover it. And then, hey, we're past 150 supply. I got a giant fuck off ball of Ling Bane that's getting bigger every second. Let's grab maybe this whole army after we get rid of this drop. And we're just going to have that sitting up there. And then when he pushes me, that's just going to smash into his third and his natural, kill his entire economy. And his push becomes an all-in. And everything else is just reinforcing non-stop Banelings at home. Terran can't really push on creep versus Massling Bane. Um, not quickly, anyway. It's going to be very slow. And you're just going to keep cutting off his rally and backstabbing him, killing his economy and production, right? While rolling Banelings into his army whenever he tries to stim in the front. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm starting to see the problem of taking eight gases and not having mineral saturated i i need the bank to be the opposite of what it is yeah in in general you very rarely need more than six gases right it's if you're going mass muter versus protoss or something maybe if you're going mass muter in general okay so check this out he pushed and then you thought about sending a backstab that should be something that's built in that's part of your plan from now on okay hey okay i'm a i you know always have ling bane counters set up ahead of time right and even in a game like this, it's like, hey, man, why don't we just have six Banelings there? Oh, he's moving out. Not only am I hitting the left side, I'm also rolling, just clicking these Banes into his mineral land, right? It's like a zero APM, low investment maneuver. Um, <clears throat> you're going for a Spire and seven Hydras right now and Hydra upgrades. So yeah. what did I just say about two, you know, going for extra different bonus random upgrades <laughs> rather than focusing on just one thing? And I, I said that because I knew you were going to do it, right? Obviously, we often do this. Unless you really are 100% focused on what you know is coming and just being really confident and focused on just, just make Ling Bane, just make Ling Bane, maybe build a Viper and a couple of Hydras and just use that Ling Bane well, we're going to just start clicking upgrades because that's what we do yeah, in this. Scenarios. I don't know what the hell I was thinking here. Yep. If I, <laughs> like, if I cancel the spore, Aspire, if I cancel the Hydra upgrades, I actually have enough minerals to actually max out. I don't know why I did this. Oh, oh no. I'm also oh. going to warn you this engagement's really bad because I think I unhotkeyed these circlings. Oh no, I didn't. No, I just clicked on the banelings. Fuck. Okay, yeah, <clears> this, <throat> is, this is not pretty. Yeah, and the thing is, this was not how you should be fighting anyway. So check it out. Whenever he pushes forward. So, first of all, why aren't we pre split, right? We already talked about that. Second thing, why aren't we jumping on this army? So that's the whole job. Oh, you don't have any banelings with your main army. Well, that's part of it, right? Because you're just a bit behind in your production and stuff. And you're spending all your gas on all this and just minerals as well on all these fancy other upgrades. Thing is, you should be jumping on this army. Why? Okay. Because then he has to siege his fucking tanks, stim, spread, right? Uh, and then you can even respread your creep. Like, do you, do you know how arduous it should be for him to get to the edge of creep up to where he sieged? And we just let him walk forwards for free. You don't need to actually want to fight. You just need to act like you want to fight. You just need to run up, kill the front bunch of his units with your Ling Bane and just pull back. And the thing is, he has to stim and run backwards or he's just going to get fucking wiped. Like his army right now is just going to get destroyed. And actually, if you just F2A moved right now, you win the game. Okay. Well, Because look at his <laughs> army. It's in total disarray, right? Yep. Total disarray. Not sieged. Okay, yeah. Not sieged, not spread. But you give him a good 20 extra seconds, I don't know, six extra seconds, seven extra seconds to, to do a nice pre-spread. And then the lings don't come in from behind as well. And that goes like that. Now imagine this different, and this is where our, our brain simulator comes in because it's hard to get reps in StarCraft. We have to look at the replay and imagine ourselves doing it the different way. So hopefully we can kind of do reps in our brain. Army comes forward. He fucking sieges his tanks back here in this shitty line. He stims his Marines back. We just pull back. Meanwhile, these units are fucking crashing into his natural right now. And we're just like, <laughs> and then the moment our army pulls back, what do we do? Inject, inject. Inject our hatcheries, build more Link Bane, morph more Bane Links. Oh, he's trying to move forward again? Okay, fucking jump on him again. Or if he's pulling back, fucking jump on him. Guess what? He left all his tanks behind on their own. All of his marines have run up to defend his natural. And all of his tanks are just sieged down here in a row. Seven tanks on their own. Your Zerglings jump on them, kill seven tanks for 25, 30 Zerglings. Um, and then, yeah, you've just got him pinned back. You're respreading creep on the right side. You have complete map dominance. He's down to 30 SCVs. He's uh, lost all of his tanks, so he's on a pure marine army that needs to push through an entire map of creep spread to get to your base. He's completely dead. So 
And that's with just Ling Bane, right? We don't need to focus on anything else. An easier transition than the Lurker transition is to go Ultras, right? Just four gas Ling Bane into, okay, drop an Ultra Cavern along with two more gases, right? Try to go six okay. gas Ultra. Oh, so if you do, oh, it's six gases for Ultra once you get to that point, okay. Yeah, I mean, you can go more than that. But the thing is like, honestly, you don't really need to focus on that. I would focus on you just playing Ling Bane only for a while just to get more and more confident with it. Cause I feel like Ling Bane has such good longevity and you can do so much with your backstabs and denying fourth bases and just running in from multiple angles and really doing this. Like, like I said, this like posturing this aggressive stance, like don't ever let them push through creep. Creep is like a nightmare zone for them because the Ling Bane's so quick at engaging and disengaging, you know, force them to siege, force them to borrow their minds. If it's a widow mine army, you know what happens when you jump on them like that? Often the widow mines are all in a big clump. And you're just like, oh, I just killed 10 Widow Mines with like four Banelings. And you just run away and you're like, <laughs> or, or you kill the whole army, you know. But if you let a Terran set up and then you fight where he's set up, it's a totally different story. For a Terran, there is nothing more frustrating and overpowered than a Zerg that refuses to fight where the Terran wants them to fight. It is the most <laughs> okay. fucking annoying thing in the world. You're like, please come fight. I'm in between two of your bases. And the Zerg's like, eh, already ran my drones away. I'm just moving them to the other side of the map, taking two hatcheries in the top left. And I just killed your entire economy behind it by sending three quarters of my army. And Terran's like, okay, well, if you're counterattacking with three quarters of your army, surely I can push through you. And you're like, yeah, no, nah, I have speed banes on creep, idiot. Like 20 speed banes and your whole army can't move forward, get fucked, you know? <laughs> and the Terran's like, this is bullshit. You know, like it's it's uh, channeling channeling the things that, that our opponents, obviously every side has bullshit things, but that's kind of um, a lot of very high level ZVT and PVT is based around not fighting when the Terran wants to fight because Terran has these moments where they're very strong and everything's all lined up for them really nicely. And they're like, please come fight me right now and check it out. I mean, look at it. You, you mentioned it, right? 2-2, two, two, mass marine tank, pre-sieged, pre-spread. Awesome. But if we're backstabbing him and forcing him home and stuff, 50 seconds from now, our 2-2 two, two finishes. Upgrade lead doesn't exist anymore. So... Just by backstabbing, you're naturally going to defuse these timings and make them way weaker. And that's going to be your natural MO of just always be backstabbing and, and that sort of stuff. And yeah, like if he was more active with his drops earlier in the game, I mean, you could have just been rolling Banelings into that base. Let's see, would that have worked if we just at 7.30, eight minutes, were rolling speed banes into this base? Let's take a look. Yeah, yeah, you, you would have cleared the whole third mineral line. If you even slow Banelings probably would have would have been able to clear that so this is why like you know just having like morphing four or six banes and just clicking them in that mineral line it's a nice little way to start early on just to get more active and other than that like we we're saying ling bane always on the left you run it into the natural and if you split just a couple of lings and banes off and click them in the third mineral line as well that's usually going to kill that entire undefended mineral line right you just click it in the mineral line the banelings will get pretty massive hits the six zerglings will kill 20 more it's uh it's it's super deadly so that's really powerful okay sweet yes this this helps significantly <laughs> so let's also go back just a little bit here and i want you to visualize as well if we're going four gas style we have a sh even if you macro the way you did this game which we already pointed out improvements delaying spore baneling nest all that Imagine we're only on four gases, which means you've got eight more drones on minerals from this third base here, right? So even at 70 workers, those eight drones, plus these five, six that are already on your fourth, you'd already be fully saturated on your fourth, even without transferring out of the main yet and without building these next 11 drones. So keep in mind, even with just 70 SCV, 70 drones, you have a crazy economy. If you ever go above 70, 72, something like that, it's to saturate a fifth base with a four gas with a four gas style. So it's like an insane amount of minerals, more than you'll probably know how to use. You'll float like crazy, I would imagine. Um, so just keep that in mind. Let's just play, I think, four gas style. Don't even think about the hive. Nothing but Ling Bane. And two two. No hive or anything else. No transition. All about movement, creep spread, and respread. Fainting on their push to force siege, stim, spread. Giant backstabs on their natural and third. Blowing up fourth bases instantly, slash not letting them even morph into PF. Okay, and how many... Uh, do I want to take a fifth hatch just for the... Uh 
the larva, and then how many drones should I have on my fourth in terms of minerals? On minerals on your fourth? Yeah. So the thing is, I mean, you can stop at just three base saturation for a long time oh, on just okay. 60 drones, and that's going to be way safer. So if you've fucked up your opening, or you're regularly fucking up your opening, or your opponents are doing crazy pushes to you, like big two base pushes, that's just going to be an easier way of doing it. I mass bling bane off 60 drones, don't have any drones on my fourth. I'm getting up my fourth, Macarach, fifth base still. Still getting all the infrastructure, but I just make these units and then I can shut down their pushes. Or, you know, I can I can, I can can defend what comes and only after I win a fight, then I can drone beyond three base, right? So that's kind of like 60 drone. Okay. Three base is super safe style. And I don't care which one you do. You, you pick whichever one just as a default. I would advise if you get your macro fixed with what we talked about, you can probably easily do the 72 drone style where you get those 12 drones or i mean depending we could go we could say 68 drone style right yeah definitely. Base saturation that. because that's basically where your fourth has the eight workers from your main plus these extra eight workers you built for it i think 68 drone four base saturation is easily attainable um and then we can imagine there's like a supercharged ridiculous style which is somewhere beyond that, which is 76 or 84. <laughs> and there's 84 drone style, which is 16 equals five base, full saturation, <coughs> insanity. And that's where you actually need a pretty quick sixth base as well, because you're gonna have to transfer workers from your natural there. Um, those are some benchmarks. I mean, it's up to you. If you just stay the super safe style, that's gonna give you great success. Um, what you okay. could do with that, for instance, is you have so many units you can literally do a giant bust whilst defending their first stim marines if you open clean, right? So in this game, it's probably about this point, right? See, first stim marines coming over on the right side, but you've already got nine banelings and 30 zerglings waiting up here above the left natural because <laughs> not only do you have these... Because look in this game, you've got 17 zerglings, 15 banes, but imagine if you're down 10 drones and you're not building these extra 11 drones. That's an extra like 40 Zerglings you could have, right? So this army could be up on the top left and everything you're producing is just like your defense right now, yeah? So you're like producing your defense, making Bane You're like, oh, this is kind of scary, these Marines, but okay, we've got some Ling Bane. Oh, his Marines have showed up though. Awesome. Click in the natural, click in the third. Now he actually has two tanks in his natural. So he's a lot safer than most people. So all you're going to be able to do is kill his third. But you'll still kill every single worker there. And then... Your 60 drones doesn't feel so bad, right? Because momentarily he's at 62, he's gotten ahead of you, but then you defend and because he's busy panicking, he might also lose every Marine on the front as well, right? Because he's like, oh fuck, pulling his SCVs and then your Ling Bane on the front also kills all 16 Marines, right? Okay. And yep. then you could be like, oh, okay, I'll build 16 drones now or something like, right? I'll saturate my fourth, transfer eight drones from my main onto my fifth, you know, like, like but I've won a fight, right? So you can see how having more units is always going to find a use. We get stuck in this Zerg mentality of like, oh, I made six more Zerglings. That means I'm just down three drones and I'm therefore behind three drones for the rest of this game. It's like, dude, those six Zerglings can always find a use. So because we're being much more proactive with our Ling Bane, thinking about that, it's, it's, it's waiting for them to move out. Waiting for them to push is always, that's like the pattern you're seeing, right? The big 2-2 two -two push moves, giant backstab goes in. This little push comes in, Bam, a, a few Bane links click in their mineral line or that big link Bane attack at the same time, right? These are things that we can just consistently set up and you just wait for them to be attacking you so that they're focusing multiple areas at once. And it's super sick what you can do. Really nice. Okay. Uh, I did have another question. What timing should I be taking my Evos, the forecast style? Should you be doing what? Sorry, can you get a bit closer to the mic? Sorry, uh, what so timing good. should I be taking my Evos with the forecast styles? At the same time as when I, uh, would, if I'm doing... What I have been doing. Yeah, I'd stick to what you're doing where you're trying to get like the. Yeah, sorry, one thing is you went a really fast bailing nest, but no layer. Okay, so I guess actually that is one issue. So the only reason for a fast bailing nest usually is like if we want to go quick, obviously for safety against like hellbats, but heavy queen right, yeah. and good micro can defend most of that. So I would really like you to just be confident with your mass queen defense, right? Because you're building your eight queens pretty early. So if you just pull all your queens together and just use a mixture of micro and then zerglings from behind, cutting off any Hellion rally and stuff, like I think that's fine. 
Um, so, I mean, basically there's two ways. One is, okay, about like 4.45, we go layer and baneling nest. We go straight for baneling speed. And then one one starts just after baneling speed starts up. And the idea is, hey, we've got the quick bane speed for control, but our upgrades are a bit later. If we go quicker double evo, we delay the layer and baneling nest. That's going to be obviously great just for having really crisp one one and two two. Um, it's totally up to whatever you kind of prefer there. Um, okay. Yeah, what sounds good to you? Um, I pr would prefer the crisper one one and two two. That's just how I like to play. But uh, yeah, I yeah. think I'll go with that crisper one 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 and two two. Okay, so in that case, I don't want you to go too crazy on the evos. But let's say 4.45 to maybe five, maybe f let's say five minute double Evo. Roughly five minute, two okay. times Evo. It could be a little bit earlier than that, technically. You'll see like, I mean, let's um, really quickly reference, just so you get a feel for this style. Uh, Dark Maru Valencia. I'm just Googling this right now. So let's go take a look at that one. I'll... Uh, Shut up, pig. That's my voice. Uh, <laughs> don't like that. <laughs> um, I'm linking it to you on Discord, mate. Perfect. Awesome. All right. So Dark um, basically did the style that we were talking about. The the quick double upgrade, really simple Massling Bane. This is what I do in tournaments first. Way better Terrans than me because it's a... Uh, I don't want to play the game on any fair footing with you, right? So I'm just going to get quick upgrades and then I'm just going to smashling Bane counterattacks into you. And, you know, when you attack me, you move out for an attack, lol, run in with a giant backstab, you lose the game. And we saw that okay. people were like, oh, Maru was tired. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure he was. Um, but Dark also did a brutal style. So in this case, he did it crazy fast, Evas. I mean, this is classic Dark. He's like, I'm going to be the greediest shithead you've ever seen in your fucking life, man. Um, this was like disgusting levels. 410 Evos. We don't want to do 410. But if you go 430... 445 that's okay i want you to focus on five minutes though because you need to build your fundamentals of droning constantly while defending with queens while building a few extra safety zerglings about four to four thirty <laughs> when that hellion number gets scary for the run by while building those later spores that you're not used to and delaying playing without the banely nest and still surviving most hell that timings despite not having a banely nest that's a lot for you to learn I don't want you to be trying to fucking rush this, the upgrades this early like Dark does because that's a bit too much, right? Um, but this just gives an idea. If you look in that VOD, <clears throat> like at game one, he then goes just for this like, lol, he has a shit ton of fucking mass 1-1 one -one lings running in and Maru's units just kind of get surrounded and he loses all the workers on his third and he's just way behind from the start. And in that case, he just went for the timing. It was like super fast upgrades. It was more of a timing rather than we're doing it more like a solid style, but we're opening up uh, our upgrades, right? So we're, 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 we're waiting for him to move out and then we're going to strike. We're not going to just shove it in there. And that's what he does in game two. So if you go to 16 minutes in the VOD, we're going to see Maru move out soon after there, I guess 17 minutes in the VOD closer to that just before that yeah yeah maru's moving out with his like he's like setting up a push in the top right of the map and i mean yeah his depot was down but still it's just the classic oh you're attacking me i'm going to defend with just a handful of queens and whatever's producing at home remember that's what i was talking about just queens and whatever's producing but i'm shoving it on your bases and as a zerg okay. if you lose a fourth or a fifth base hatchery and they lose every worker on their third. Who comes out on top, right? <laughs> what's what's more easily replaced? <laughs> Zerg can always replace a hatchery. Part of the beauty of having five, six hatcheries up, you know, already is like, you just don't give a shit. It's like, oh, I lost a barracks. That's basically what it is for us. They lose an entire base of workers, which they can't replace quickly at all. So um, yeah, Dark showed some really brutal ways of doing this. And he was just like, one, one, smash, two, two, smash. Um, you're not really gonna be looking for this in terms of upgrade advantages right? We're not going to be rushing the upgrades as fast as he does, but you will be waiting like he did here. Um, I guess he didn't really wait so much in position. Let's check actually. Was he off on that left side waiting for the move out? No, he just kind of shoved across at that time. We'd probably be waiting and then we see the army move out and then we'd shove in, but it'll be a similar format. Terran moves out, we backstab. Um, Raynor fucked Clem up uh, in Home Story. Home Story? Valence? Uh... No, EU, EU regionals. EU regionals for Valencia. That's what I was casting recently. He, he fucked Clem up the same way. Just every time Clem wanted to attack, he was in his mineral line. And um, 
I think have you have you off raced Terran much? Nah, not not a ton. I mean, I played it a little bit, but not I, I enough think... to be super familiar with it. It's just like the the main thing is you just want to really appreciate the fucking frustration that they feel when a Zerg hits them in multiple places because it's stressful setting up a fight as a Terran because their army is very fragile and speed banes, speed banes on creeps, speed banes when you're not looking, really really scary. As a Zerg, it's easy to go, oh man, they're, I mean they're always ready for it. Like you know they're never going to be clumped up. It's fucking shit. Banelings do nothing. But the moment you start forcing a Terran to be raising depots and stimming and spreading and pulling SCVs and micring while doing shit on the front, like suddenly it is like their stress factor hits a thousand, you know, and it's very, very hard for them to deal with. So that's part of what ZBT is about. It's about making your opponent have to deal with a lot of things. And the moment they they, they turtle up and shell up, you're like, oh, cool, I'll cover the entire map in creep spread. Like if you're not going to dance with me, I'll cover the entire map with creep spread. And when you do step out, those backstabs are waiting, you know. Um, so that's, that's a really fantastic way of doing it where, you know, you're not like, I need to kill this army, but you're like, I just want to make you lift up, keep spreading my creep. I want to make you lift up. Oh, it's a real army. Okay. I'm going to make you siege up and look at this and just run away. And guess what? Two thirds of my army hitting your natural right now. Like, you know, we're always set up to be the one who's initiating the fights. And that's really huge. We let the Terran initiate, pick where the fights happen. They're going to wreck us, but this is really cool. I think we've got uh, a few different kind of things with optimizing your build order, later spores, bane nest, all that sort of stuff, but also with the engagements really being pre-set up in that default mode of setting up counterattacks, whether that be at this stage, grabbing five banelings and just clicking them in the third mineral line, whether it be a minute and a half, nine minutes from now, something like that, grabbing half your army and putting them up on control group number two or five or whatever, waiting up in the, your opponent's fourth base, ready to backstab, right? When he moves out. It's just, everything is like, hey, I'm massing Ling Bane and I'm setting up for that. And because you're not thinking about Hive or anything, you're giving yourself that like training environment of like just win with Ling Bane. Um, it's going to be really cool. Because like, hey, if you fall too far behind and then they get to late game and they've got mass widow mines everywhere and it's really shit, and it's not working. Okay, cool. Fix your opening, right? There's always things you can do better with your opening. And if you are actually in a good spot and you can't do it, it's like, hey, just fix the movement, get better with the Ling Bane production, get more confident using these multiple control groups, and you should really be able to evolve this to the next level. So that's my suggestion, is to keep yourself focused, give yourself the challenge of no hive or anything. Ultra transition can okay. absolutely work with six gas. Lurker transition can absolutely work off this style. It's really up to you how you want to play it and what you enjoy, but that's just my advice on kind of like, you know, I always like the restrictive challenge because it makes it very easy to like draw conclusions on what's working and what we did right and what we did wrong. Okay, awesome. Sounds very good. <clears throat> Thank you. Awesome. All right, mate. Um, are there any questions that have been floating around? I know I've been kind of rambling a lot and explaining a lot, but uh, are there any questions that have popped up? Uh, for me, no, no. You've uh, you've answered all my questions. <laughs> awesome. All right, mate. I um, there's lots of notes there. Let me know if anything doesn't make sense in those. Um, okay. Yep. Let's uh, try and think those. if there's something we've missed. <laughs> we've still got about five six minutes, so let's just kind of wrap up and make sure we cover all of our bases and have a good understanding. So, um, are you are you confident against Hellbat timings without the Banley Nest? Like you kind of have a, an idea of what uh, to do, or do you think you feel like is there a little bit in the back of your voice, back of your brain, a voice saying, "I'm gonna fucking die anytime Hellbats hit me"? Um, I would say I'm in between that. I've gotten much better at splitting my queens and like microing them individually backwards and letting it in small groups of zerglings, so I don't not all of them get fried by the Hellbats. But mm -hmm. I generally do. That's why the Banley Nest was so fast, is because I am a, still afraid of them. <laughs> But um, I have been getting better at, at doing it with Queen Ling. So I feel like that's something I can improve on and uh, feel more comfortable with. Cool. Yeah. I mean, just keep an eye on exactly like check the replays afterwards and stuff, you know, like a, a giant Hellbat BC one with like 14 Hellbats or 12 or something. It's like, okay, yeah, you probably did need your Bane the Nest up by then. But, you know, <laughs> right. your, your build usually like that number one, it's rare. So there's that but number two it's like hey it's not like your bailing nest should be that crazy late with your build so hey maybe your bailing nest just need to be 10 seconds faster or something right you know there's always going to be the the rare weird off case um that's fine you know don't don't change everything to to fix that edge case scenario right um yeah 
yeah, opponent didn't have combat shields in this game as well, so that would have been yeah. a gift, actually. <laughs> I, uh, I realized there. I'm like, hey. Um, that, that makes it so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually just crazy how huge the forcing them to siege up is, though. Like, the, the, the running forward and pulling back. Like, I'll tell you, when you're playing Terran and a Zerg is really active with those units doing that, it's fucking annoying. I'm like, are you fighting me or not? Because, like, I've had times where you, like, unsiege, start moving forward, and they're already jumping on you again, and you're sieging and stimming and spreading, and they're just running away again, and you're like, fuck. <laughs> like, it's actually infuriating because you just feel like, you're like, okay, I really should have split two or three drops across the map because this player, I'm never going to get across the map unless I'm, like, pulling them back into their bases. Like, I needed to have two lib sieging mineral lines and a drop hit somewhere else. That then maybe I could have pushed across the map, right? Because this guy's just too active with his units. And like, it's just impossible to get my push through all that creep spread and stuff. So that's really big. And then, and then right when you finally are getting your push forward, it's like the backstab hits and you're just like, my God, Zerg is not fair. They just fucking click these units in. They don't have to micro them. They just A move here, A move there. Obviously there's an art form to how those A moves happen, but um, it's natural that we want to we want to trigger our opponents, and that's kind of where that Terran <laughs> that we want that Terran rage to come out. We want it to feel super fucking unfair. Yes, I would love it. I would love it. <laughs> I love Nort played really good though, so no shame in losing this game, mate. Um, I remember Innovation used to love this eight racks reactor. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, dude. And I was like, fuck, man, if an Ultralist gets out, that thing's going to have a party, you know, or a, <laughs> a single lurker. But like the Marine Firepower True. is kind of insane. It is actually wild. Um, oh, actually, I think there was maybe one more benchmark I was going to give you, actually. So, so like some benchmarks is really important to check those, right? So we said, I think five minutes, you want your third fully saturated, yeah? Yes, yep. I don't know if I even wrote that down. Mm. All right, let me write down some benchy markies. Uh -huh. Benchmarks. Three base full of mineral drones, which should be what? 48 workers, right? Wait, three times 16 is 48 plus three on gas. So like 51 drones because you've got one gas mining at that point, right? Yep, yep. Uh oh, uh fourth and fifth, yeah, fourth plus fifth base, or in your case, maybe it's fourth and macro hatch timing that you stick to more. Um, but basically that the timing of those. Check that shit. Um, if you can get that, if both started, I don't know, let's say 530, you want to have both of those started. That's pretty ambitious. Okay. Okay. Maybe 545. But if you can have them started the earlier the better right so when i have a really smooth opening when my opponent's early pressure kind of fumbles like i kill the reaper or something one of the first hellions dies without doing anything i don't have to build any extra zerglings sometimes i'm like oh i'm fully saturated on minerals at 4 30 4 20 like i said 4 25 and then i'm taking my gases but i'm also sometimes i'm like oh you know what i'm just going to take my fourth and my fifth like as I'm just before I start taking my gases. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm oversaturating my bases because I'm not stopping drone production, of course, but they're like getting oversaturated. And I'm like, bam, fourth base, 445, like 450, fifth base, five minutes, 10 or something. And then all my gases start going down. And that's obviously greedy and it's not what I normally do, but there are games where that happens just to give you, you, you kind of that idea. And if you get away with it, like it's not even close, the amount of production I have, because those hatcheries are then finishing at like six minutes, six minutes, 10, 620. And my queens, all those creep queens are stacking like five injects on each of those bases. And by eight minutes, I have, I'm, I'm fucking beyond maxed on Ling Bane. Like it's just a crazy endless number of units, you know, um, <laughs> coming forward. So the idea is that's kind of the super advanced feels you get for like, oh, hey, my opponent literally is not pressuring at all. He's just sitting at home until he has six Hellions. Oh, it's not until five minutes when there's six aliens and a lib poking. But at that point, I'm so far ahead on the drones, you know, as long as I don't take big damage. That like, like, you know, so, so there's like, you're going to, as you get better, and this is not what you're aiming for at the start, but with experience, you're going to get way further ahead against the passive Terrans that give you room. You're going to get better at taking advantage of that, right? You're going to start to feel the difference between a guy who's fucking 
living or dying off his hellions killing workers and a guy who's just <laughs> sitting there and taking a really quick third CC, perfect 1-1 one, one into 2-2 two, two timing, perfect macro Terrans, right? So uh, it's it's good when we start to appreciate the difference between those two and you go, okay, this guy is like giving me room to breathe. I am going to just explode. It's It's a good feeling, man. Awesome. I am looking forward to that. <laughs> awesome. All right, mate. I think you're doing really good so far. Um, like I said, up to you if you want to start learning the queen stuff with the split queen group. It can be really okay. good. Um, up to you. Uh, yeah, it's 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 nice. It took me a very long time to decide to do it. Uh, Scarlet had to nag me into that one. Um, a lot of the pros saw Raynor do it and went, yeah, that looks good, but Raynor did it. I don't think I can do that. And now they all the Europeans do it. Um, some of the Koreans do it as well, depending on the situation. Awesome, man. Um, anyways, well, this was a good little sesh. Good to get back into it. Um, hit me up if you want to set up another one in the near future. But otherwise, just, uh, yeah, record right. some re re replays. Try to monitor your progress a little bit, you know, just keep focused. <laughs> and uh, hopefully you'll be the four gasling Bane King when we uh, get back into it. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. No worries, mate. I hope you have a great day, dude. You too. You too. Peace. Ladies, mate.